Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way, where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. In this series, we're going to be looking at ZenBrush. This is an app that has been released on all three platforms, including Android, iOS, and Windows. For Android, ZenBrush 1 and ZenBrush 3 have been released. And ZenBrush 2 was only available on um, iOS and Windows. But I wanted to go ahead and do a review of all three of these apps. And so here we're looking at ZenBrush 1 for Android. Now ZenBrush is an ink painting app and it's supposed to mimic Japanese ink painting. And <clears throat> so here you see that it was only available in portrait mode for Android in ZenBrush 1. And it didn't have a lot of different ink colors or anything. It mostly had uh, ink colors that went along with the color of the background. Now it had lots of different backgrounds and as you can see that the ink color changed with the different backgrounds that you had. And here this is kind of a metallic background and um, the ink was pink that uh, came with this background. And if you just go through all these different backgrounds you can get different colors of ink that way but you couldn't choose um, any of your ink colors. They just went with whatever um, paper that you had. And here you can see that I have a, a wintry type background and the ink was actually white which made a really neat looking um, picture. And you could always do the ink in three different shades. Um, it, it usually had the opacity was really um, full and high and then it would have a middle, a medium opacity and then kind of a transparent looking one. So <clears throat> if you go ahead and, and click into the background there you can find all these different um, papers and there were a lot of them that had a brown ink and a lot of them that had black ink and they were mostly the ones that uh, were the most common and as you can see you can adjust the size of your brush and uh, but it's still it's just um, an ink brush and it it only had one setting so you could you could adjust the size you could adjust the opacity or the shade of the ink and that was about it in ZenBrush 1 and you could uh, it had the undo button on there and and also the uh, um, trash can button which uh, just deleted your painting and you started over again. So, but you could make some really neat um, ink looking pictures with it and here I'm just kind of doing an old dead tree in the forest just to show you that you could do a a quick little sketch with it if you wanted to and it was it made for some really neat effects actually and it looked really neat. So ZenBrush 1 is um, it's really fun. It's just a quick little simple simple app. Now ZenBrush 2 and ZenBrush 3 were a little bit more complex. And here I'm just showing that you could actually save your work and go ahead and export it out if you wanted to. Now this is ZenBrush 3. And this is also on Android and it has more complex functions in it. Um, it has a water brush where you can add some water effects. It has an eraser. It has um, different uh, shades of opacity of your inks. You could have a thin transparent and all the way up to a really thick ink. And then it also has these water functions that are kind of like water colors. And so you can actually dry your canvas or leave it wet. And then of course it also has a whole bunch of different backgrounds as well. So you could choose um, different kinds of paper on this one. It had different colors of paper and it even has three dimensional objects that kind of make it look like um, 
uh, either wood staining or even maybe a little bit you could make it look like a wood burn even if you had it dark enough maybe and here I'm just kind of scribbling around on it to show you that it looks like a, a board that you could actually paint on a board with uh, say these kinds of ink and <clears throat> so then you can also um, make it uh, run with the water brush and <clears throat> the eraser you can erase out on it and then dry it so that it won't uh, run with water anymore and then you can go ahead and export this out as a jpeg file and a png file and you can also adjust the size. Now you couldn't adjust the size in ZenBrush 1 either. And then this also has different kinds of settings for your um, S Pen and your stylus. And it even has um, all the way up to uh, 3000 pixels that you can uh, make your canvas. Now I was trying this on the S4 and when I tried to do the top canvas size it crashed. So it probably depends on your device as to how stable that is. <clears throat> but here I'm um, just kind of playing around with the different uh, types of water. Uh, you, can, you can have a dry brush or you can have a really wet brush. And it really does uh, do a good job of mimicking ink like you were um, doing real Japanese ink painting. And then this is uh, mimics blotting paper so you can actually um, mimic if you took a paper towel and and blotted some of the ink off or um, erased it out with a, a cloth or something like that so it has quite a few different settings in ZenBrush 3 and it's it's a little bit more of a complex program than ZenBrush 1 plus it also has landscape mode which is what I really like because that's what I want on my tablets is landscape mode and a lot of apps are not tablet optimized sometimes and so that's really nice that ZenBrush 3 is optimized for tablets and then here you can see all the different things that you can uh, paint on this is kind of a magic lantern type or Japanese lantern as they call them and you can paint little um, scenes on it and it looks really neat actually and it actually looks like it's glowing from um, within so you can get some really neat effects there and I'm just kind of playing around with the opacity of the ink and uh, drawing an old dead tree there just to to give it kind of a neat design there and you can also pick the colors of your ink in this one in ZenBrush 3. It has um, a whole bunch of different colors of ink so you're not um, stuck with just what ink goes with a certain background. You can pick all the way from pinks and greens, blues, purples, browns and whites and uh, peach color and all kinds of uh, different colors of ink so that's really neat. And then here I'm just kind of you can either export just the image that you um, have or you can export what you've got it on uh, such as the background there. So you can export it as a lantern or you can just export it as a PNG file and have just a, a picture of the tree and then do whatever you want to in another program or something. So for me 2400 by 3200 pixels works the best on my Samsung Tab S4 and then here you can go ahead and uh, go ahead and ch uh, change the interface if you want to. You can move it around, move the color picker around, move the toolbar around. Uh, you can do all kinds of things um, setting it up like that and then here it also has gold papers and uh, parchment papers and wood and things that look like uh, notebooks. You can just kind of play around with all the different background settings and it has uh, more and varied 
background settings than ZenBrush 1 does. And so you can just kind of play around with um, the different colors of ink. And it kind of mimics, I suppose, uh, acrylic ink, I would say. So <clears throat> this is the end of part one of my review of the ZenBrush apps. And in part two, I want to play around a little bit more with ZenBrush 3 and show you some of the things that it can do. And then in part three of this series, I'll show you how ZenBrush 2 for Windows compares to ZenBrush 1 and 3 for Android. So if you want to see that, hit the subscribe button. Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below. And I will catch you later.